Uh, one of the first stories that I do wanted to talk about is an interesting story, to say the least. Topic that we've talked about multiple times here on the show. It is life outside of our own world. Oxygen level in distant planets reveal presence of alien technology. What? Alien technology is revealed. Okay, let's read this article. This is by Earth.com. In the ever-evolving quest to uncover extraterrestrial life, researchers are now expanding their scope to include not just biological indicators like oxygen, but also signs of technology. This shift in focus brings light brings to light a key element often associated with life as we know it, oxygen. Oxygen, as we know, is very important for the survivability of not just me and you, but for the ultimate explosion of life that was originally here on this planet millions if not billions of years ago so it is something that is very important adam frank of the university of Rod rochester and emilio balbi associate professor of astronomy and astrophysics at the university of roma tor vergata italy delve into this connection and their thought-provoking new study their research highlights the intricate relationship between atmospheric oxygen and the emergence of advanced technology on distant planets. So how the relationship between, say, you have more oxygen on your planet than another one. One, does this mean that life even is able to survive and thrive and evolve and make it from generation to generation and still survive? Or could it possibly mean that um, at lower uh, concentrations of oxygen, that there is a certain limit at to what a technology or a technological civilization can be achieved. This is kind of what the study was kind of discussing and trying to talk about, and let's continue reading. Frank emphasizes the readiness to detect life to be on Earth, questioning how planetary conditions might hint at intelligent technology producing life. Quote, we are ready to find signatures of life on alien worlds, but how do the conditions on a planet tell us about the possibility for intelligent technology producing life? Balaby adds, discussing their exploration into whether any atmosphere composition could support advanced technology. Their findings suggest strict atmospheric requirements for such advancement. So when we get to a certain point, there is a limit as to what you have to get above this certain threshold for the amount of oxygen. This is kind of what their research has pointed out that say, and the, these are not real numbers that they were using in their study, but say on a scale from one to 10, let's say in order to get to a civilization, much like we have here on earth currently in 2024, you need to have a five out of 10 oxygen level. Now, if you have another planet out there that has, say, a 4 out of 10 oxygen level, and they had all the same conditions on their planet as we do here, the same basic history, the same amount of resources and uh, atmospheric conditions besides the oxygen, would they progress to the same level in the same amount of time as we have on this planet? depends is what this is basically saying and then obviously if you have more does that mean that the society will progress faster not too sure concept of technospheres what's a technosphere well the duo introduces the concept of technosphere vast domains of advanced technology emitting unique signs or techno signatures indicative of extraterrestrial intelligence they argue that oxygen is not only vital for respiration and metabolism in multicellular organisms, but also essential for, essential for developing fire, a cornerstone of technological civilizations. On Earth, the evolution of technology has hinged on the ability to use, use or utilize open air combustion, a process for fuel and an oxygen oxygen is typically that oxidant combined to create fire. 
From cooking and metal forging to energy harnessing, combustion has been pivotal in shaping industrial society. So if they went the industrial route, if they wanted to fuse metals, if they wanted to have cars that run on uh, combustion engines where you're blowing up basically, creating explosions inside of the engine to push push a piston, um, if that's the route that they have gone down, then we could probably surmise that if you're having a civilization that has, say, like a, to go back to my earlier point, a five or a six out of 10 oxygen level versus a three to four oxygen level, there could be a massive difference in the technological advancement of that civilization just due to the fact of there is more or less oxygen in the atmosphere to do these things, to have this cellular respiration and metabolism among these multi multicellular organisms. Because if you have less oxygen, you're not able to reproduce as fast, especially down to very, very small cells. And then if you're going to cook your meats, if you're going to do all this stuff that us as early hunter-gatherers did – where we're cooking foods over fire and we're uh, boiling water from rivers and lakes and stuff to get the toxins out of it. If you have less oxygen on that planet, it's going to be much harder to have a fire and keep it sustained. You're going to need a lot more fuel for that fire if you have less oxygen in the atmosphere. On the other side, if you have more oxygen in the atmosphere, you need far less resources in order to keep that fire going per se. So in these two different examples, and these in particular with the fire and then obviously with the cellular respiration, the oxygen content level or the oxygen content, I'll just say, of the atmosphere is extremely important. And you can see how over the course of our existence and our evolution that you could potentially have a lot of things either sped up or slowed down in terms of our advancement forward just due to the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere because there's a lot of things believe it or not that use combustion i mean i'm sitting right next to a highway and if the oxygen level was about 10 to 15 percent more on this planet or 10 to 15 percent less on this planet i don't know if these very cars that are driving next to me on this highway would still be here that is to be determined but it's an interesting thought experiment, but let's continue on. You might be able to get biology. You might even be able to get intelligent creatures in a world that doesn't have oxygen, Frank says. But without a ready source of fire, you're never going to develop higher technology because higher technology requires fuel and melting. So maybe with that, once again, going back to this scale, if you have a 4 out of 10 oxygen level, where we currently have a 5 out of 10, there's basically going to be an upper limit to the amount of stuff that you can really do. The amount of technology and advancement of a society that you can potentially do. Let's continue on. Interestingly, the oxygen levels needed to biologically sustain complex life and intelligence are lower than those required for technology. So just having humans live, humans being able to reproduce and kind of live in their own world is less than the need for creating a car that runs on a combustion engine or a factory that is melting metals together to create alloys for use in those very same cars. If you want to use things like aluminum, you're going to be melting steel down. And all of this different stuff requires oxygen in the atmosphere to basically start these combustions. Thus, while a series might evolve in an oxygen deficient world, it is unlikely to progress, keyword is progress, into a technological species, the study suggests. Next up, the oxygen bottleneck. Frank elaborates on this bottleneck, stating that high oxygen levels are a prerequisite for a technological species. Without it, all other conditions may align, but technological advancement remains unachievable. Quote, the presence of high degrees of oxygen in the atmosphere is like a bottleneck. You have to get through in order to have a technological species, Frank says. 
quote, you can have everything else work out, but if you don't have oxygen in the atmosphere, you're not going to have a technological species. So just the very presence of oxygen is highly indicative of a technological species. Like we think of here on Earth, obviously, with all the combustion and stuff that I've mentioned over and over again, there are places like K218b. Now, I don't know if they've discovered a specific level of oxygen in the atmosphere, but there is very strong evidence that there are organisms already on that planet because there are certain byproducts that are being pushed out from um, – I don't know the exact uh, thing off the top of my head, but for K218b, it is an exoplanet that is pretty far away from us, but – there is a certain compound in the atmosphere that can only be created or that we know can only be created uh, by organisms that are here on Earth. So by living organisms, their byproduct of doing what they do, just living their life, their byproduct goes up into the atmosphere and it presents itself as this particular chemical structure. And we found that in K218b's atmosphere. And this is... Crazy, 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 a very important thing. We need to do a lot more research into the topic, and I hope so that we'll be able to figure some more stuff out about that. However, let's say K218b has maybe half of the oxygen that we do. If we fast forward 100, a million, a billion years in the future, Will that life evolve into something similar or even resembles anything here on Earth? According to the study, it's going to be much, much harder, much, much harder. Because like they say, the presence of high degrees of oxygen in the atmosphere is like a bottleneck. You have to get through in order to have a technological species. You can have everything else work out, but if you don't have oxygen in the atmosphere, you're not going to have a technological species. You're not going to be creating Star Trek. You're not going to have this crazy, crazy advanced civilization if you have a lower level of oxygen in the atmosphere, which is interesting. All right, and now let's go on to the implications, our final thing. Frank concludes by emphasizing the need to focus on planets with high oxygen levels, as their atmospheres could be a significant indicator in locating potential techno signatures. Quote, targeting planets with high oxygen levels should be prioritized because the presence or absence of high oxygen levels in exoplanet atmospheres could be a major clue in finding potential techno signatures. So finding very advanced civilizations if we look at a planet that has and we're able to look through its atmosphere and see that there is a high level of oxygen there that could be a good sign that there is most likely a civilization that if not now but in the future could be extremely intelligent and possibly outperform us in their technological advancements maybe they progress to uh, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion faster. Maybe they uh, decide not to drop atomic bombs on other countries or other places on their planet. And as a result, they're able to use that technology for power and for creation of other technologies. And they're able to progress much faster on that planet than we are here. And you take that out 5, 10, 15, 20, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 years, and all of a sudden you have a civilization who is outperforming even what our science fiction novels are able to basically think up. Balbi adds a cautionary note on interpreting such detections, highlighting the monumental implications of discovering intelligent technological life on another planet and the importance of being skeptical about technosignatures from planets with insufficient atmospheric oxygen. Quote, the implication of the discovering intelligent technological life on another planet would be huge. Therefore, we need to be extremely cautious in interpreting possible detections. Our study suggests that we would be skeptical of potential techno signatures from a planet with insufficient atmospheric ops 
oxygen. Therefore, let me read it again. Therefore, we need to be extremely cautious in, interpret in interpreting possible detections. Our study suggests that we would be skeptical of potential technosignatures from a planet with insufficient atmospheric oxygen. So if there's a planet and we say, once again, I'm going to keep going back to this, they have a 4 out of 10 oxygen where we on Earth have a 5 out of 10 oxygen. If we find a place that has a 2 out of 10, that does not necessarily mean that we should write them off because there is no chance that they'll ever have life there. That's not what this study is saying. This study is saying – there is a potential that a 2 out of 10 planet oxygen level would not be able to get to a technological advancement as we have here on Earth in a same or similar time frame. That is basically what it's saying. It's not saying that life cannot exist on a 2 out of 10 or a 1 out of 10 oxygen level planet. It is saying, however, that there does seem to be a lot of evidence and a lot of different factors that contribute to the advancement of a civilization on a specific time period. And oxygen has a lot to do with that, particularly when it comes to combustion. I mean, if you think about even two, three hundred years ago, when we're just just beginning, we're saying 1800s, 1700s. I mean, right around the time when we're starting to have massive world wars, like wars that are spanning across continents. We're not we're not dealing with localized places where you have a particular country is fighting its neighboring countries. Two, three hundred years ago, we're having people get on boats and traveling across the ocean to go kill people across the pond. That's the Revolutionary War, and one of the things that happened with that is there are multiple factors that would get people there. You have to think about, one, the weapons that they are using. Now, you also have to think about the ships that are being built and the certain metals that are being put into the hull of the ship, the certain metals that are being put into the bullets, the certain metal that is being used to hold the ship together, the metals that are being used for – Anything on that ship, the bowls, the plates, all of this stuff is determined in its structural capacity and its strength and in its resilience based on the amount of oxygen that is in our atmosphere on this current planet. And now imagine, boom, you get on land. You're coming from Europe to America. You get on land and you start shooting. Now, those bullets and that ammo that you are using, say, two, three hundred years ago, is greatly impacted by combustion or grenades that you are throwing in the 18 or early 1900s in World War I. Those grenades and those bombs and those artillery shells and those tank shells and those mortar rounds are being extremely impacted by the reaction of oxygen because that is what is giving them that combustion and that explosion because in order to fire a weapon you need to have oxygen you need to have some form of combustion in order to get that projectile out of your barrel of your gun so even going back just two three hundred years if you adjust the oxygen level so that it's more or less that has a great impact on the level of technological advancement that we could have there because imagine if you had twice as much oxygen in the atmosphere and you had these weapons whose explosive power was doubled or even tripled, maybe even exponentially more powerful just based on the level of oxygen in our atmosphere. How many more people would die? How much better would those ships be? How much better would that ammo be? How much better would all of their supplies be? How fast would they be able to build an actual engine because they're able to conquer these territories and they're able to build fires to help keep themselves warmer in the wintertime? Because early on when we were coming over to America and settling in these different settlements across the, the place and kicking out the indigenous population and then setting up shop there, 
part of the reason why oxygen is important is because a lot of those people had to set up fires in their homes because they couldn't live outside. They didn't have a Canada goose coat. They didn't have these wonderful jackets. They didn't have clothes like I'm wearing right now. They weren't wearing sweatshirts and t-shirts and stuff. No, they were, they were heating themselves by fires. And now if you change the oxygen level in the atmosphere, instead of having to spend six hours a day going out and chopping down wood and trees and harvesting that wood and building a fire, maybe you have to spend 30 minutes doing so because you only need a fifth of the amount of wood to burn to get the same exact amount of energy. So with that extra time, you could be thinking of whatever. You could be writing books. You could be spending time with your family. You could be thinking of new technological advancements because not as much of your time is being taken up by trying to find enough wood to burn because the particular amount of oxygen in the atmosphere burns at this particular rate. Very, very interesting stuff. It, I mean, it would have an outstanding impact on – that was just an example from two, three hundred years ago. There's so many different factors in, in, the, in the realm of technological – technological advancements in technology and overall just survival of people that is impacted based off of the fact of the oxygen in our atmosphere. So why not have this on a different planet? And then here is the study from nature.com. I'll post all of this in the, the description as well. So don't be worried, but here's just their abstract. You got to, you got, you can rent or buy this article. Uh, subscribe to the journal for $120 a year. I think I'm good. Jeez. All right, I'll just read this abstract and we'll get out of here. As oxygen is essential for respiration and metabolism for multicellular organisms on Earth, its presence may be crucial for the development of a complex biosphere on other planets. And because life itself through photosynthesis contributed to creating our oxygen rich atmosphere oxygen has long been considered as a possible biosignature here we consider the relationship between atmospheric oxygen and the development of technology we argue that only planets with substantial oxygen partial pressure po2 will be capable of developing advanced technospheres and hence techno signatures that we can detect but open air combustion needed, for example, for metallurgy is possible only in Earth-like atmospheres when PO2 is greater or equal to 18%. So here is a physical number, not the, the graph that I – or the example I was using earlier where it's just basically 1 through 10. Equal or above 18% oxygen partial pressure. That's what they're using. This limit is higher than the – one needed to sustain a complex biosphere and multicellular organisms. We further review other possible planetary atmosphere compositions and conclude that oxygen is the most likely candidate for the evolution of technological species. Thus, the presence of PO2 being equal or more than 18% in exoplanet atmospheres may represent a contextual prior required a contextual prior required for the planning and interpretation of techno signature searches. So be on the lookout next time they talk about a particular exoplanet that they're looking at as this amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. Maybe if you fast forward 5, 10, 15, whatever the time frame you want to use, maybe that means that they'll advance either faster, equal, or slower than us.